Welcome to another episode of Game Changers for Government Contractors. I'm your host, Michael Lejeune, and today I'm going to be talking about mastering government contracting sales calls. This is one of the things that a lot of salespeople struggle with. And part of the reason why is most people look at it as, well, sales is sales, right? You know, regardless of what you're selling, who you're selling to, sales is sales. And that's not exactly true. And it there's a hint of truth to it. The problem is in the commercial market, sales is done by volume. And what I mean by that is it's usually a volume of rejects. You call, you say your little thing, you get rejected, you call again, you get rejected, you call again, you get rejected. You do that over and over and over again, and you play the numbers game. At some point, somebody will either take pity on you, or they will hear something in your quick sales pitch that makes them say, tell me more. And they'll bypass the fact that you cold call them and it'll work. You shouldn't do that in the commercial market. You shouldn't, but people do. In the government market, if you do that, you will irritate people faster than you can imagine. Because it is the urge of most salespeople when they finally get through to somebody to just kind of vomit. That's the best way to say it. Their entire sales pitch. Hi, my name is Mike, and I work for this company. We do all this stuff. It's really cool. You should buy our widgets. Do you want some widgets? We sell widgets. I've got a lot of widgets. Please buy some widgets. And then when you finally take a breath, they say, no thanks, or send me your capability statement, or they just hang up, or whatever it may be. Because the point here is you've not done your homework, and you're approaching this a lot of times like commercial sales. That's often why people are really struggling to reach contracting officers, program managers, teaming partners, whoever it is. You're struggling because you're approaching it the wrong way. And so the way you should be approaching this is very simply based on research. You should actually have a plan of attack when you make a call that is based on all the research that you do. You should know your target client inside and out. You should know about them from all the different data sources that are out there. I've covered that in a lot of other podcasts. I'm not going to get too much into that today, but just know there's SAM.gov, there's USA Spending, there's FPDS, there's the GSA Sales Query Tools, there's Agency Forecast, there's Google, there's LinkedIn. There's a lot of sources to give you a great image of everything that's going on at your agency. You have no excuse. You should know contractors. You should know current contracts, programs that are going on. You should know all of that stuff before you pick up the phone. Because once you pick up the phone and you start reaching out, you've got to act like you know them. You do. Because if you act any other way, they're going to smell it coming. And you're going to get the brush off. You're going to be told to just go pound sand. Like go do something else. And sometimes it'll sound really nice. Like, oh, I'm really interested. Send me that capability statement. I'm going to put that in my file. And one of these days when I have a need, I'm going to you know, reach out to you. And then they hang up the phone. And the first thing they probably do is yell over the cubicle if they're in the office and go, hey, Janet, you'll never guess. I just told somebody to send me their capability statement again. And they totally bought it. You know, I got just got off the phone, right? Like that's probably going to happen in that situation because they have had the same call over and over and over and over again, where somebody's called with little or no information, begged for a contract, they stopped them in their tracks and politely gave them some sort of brush off. You don't want that happening to you. So build your plan around the research. That's number one thing. The second thing is, You need to understand what your primary objective is when you're making the call. There's typically three. That's it. There's typically three things. The first one is you're trying to learn something very specific. It's likely on an upcoming contract, or it could be about a current contract. It could be a program manager name. It could be a contracting number or a contract number. It could be something simple, but typically when you're reaching out to a contracting officer, You're looking for something very specific. That's objective number one. Objective number two is you're often looking to book a capability brief. This is where you go very in-depth with who you are, what you do, what you sell, and then you grill them a whole lot about the agency and their needs. 
get there's a podcast just on booking capability briefs and how to run those. You can go listen to that later. I'm not going to dive deep into that. The third thing, and it's one of the most critical things, is you're looking to build the relationship with that person. So those are the three objectives. You're looking for something specific, a piece of information. You're looking to book a capability brief, or you are looking to build that relationship. Those are the three objectives. You're not looking for that fourth one, the elusive sale. The odds are, if it's a first call, if it's a fifth call, the odds are you're not going to get a sale from the call. That's just the way it is. Depending on what you sell, what time of year it is, what their budget is, they may not have a budget for it, uh, maybe too expensive for them to do a micro purchase or simplified acquisition or even consider an 8A sole source. And you have to remember, if this is your first through your fifth, maybe first through your seventh call, they don't know you. So it's hard to pitch them something when they don't know you. That's why building a relationship is so important and foundational to everything. You can build a relationship by calling to learn something specific. Hey, Miss Contracting Officer, I'm looking for this bit of information. I have searched high and low. I promise you I've done my due diligence here and I cannot find this. Could you help me with this really simple thing or forward me to someone who can? I'd really appreciate it. That's a simple way to build a relationship because they're like, oh, they're not asking for the moon. They're not giving me homework. And you can start to build a relationship of trust with that person because, again, you're not asking them to do a whole lot there. It's very simple. During capability brief, you can build a relationship. You can ask them a lot of questions. You can learn more about them. You can listen more than you talk. So those are a couple of objectives. So when you pick up the phone, You need to know which one of those objectives you're focused on so that you can plan how you're going to run through the call, because that's the next thing is you need that plan. So when those primary objectives don't work, you also need a backup plan where you pivot from what your primary objective was to a secondary thing. And we can use those three as a way to do that. So let's say you call up a contracting officer and you reach out and say, hey, I'm looking for this contract number. Uh, This should be really easy to find, but I have looked high and low. Is this something you think you could find for me real quick and send over to me? And maybe they're going to say, you know what? I don't manage that. I don't know what you're talking about. Not sure I could be of any help. Okay, I I appreciate that. Um, While I have you on the phone, this is pivoting. While I have you on the phone, as I was going through my research, I noticed you buy what I sell. You have some upcoming contracts for this coming year. I've seen a couple of RFIs sources saw it. I'm really interested in giving a capability brief to you. I promise you, I won't be annoying and spend 30 minutes on the company. I'll spend five or six minutes on the company and what we do. And then the rest of the time we have is just about it. You know, me asking some questions about the agency. Would that be okay? Can we go ahead and book that capability brief today? And if they say no, not today, guess what you do? You pivot again. You pivot to the relationship side of it. Hey, totally understand that. I respect that you are super busy right now. When would be a good time in the next couple of months to circle back with you about that capability brief? They're likely going to say, well, give me a, call me in a month, reach out and whatever. And what I would likely say is um, instead of just calling you a month to try and get on your calendar, Could we go ahead and just book that today for a month out or six weeks out? Would that work? And it's another pivot. So you have that pivot plan. So when something you ask for doesn't work, you can go to the next one. Now, look, here's the deal. Don't pivot till you get a yes. Only pivot two or three times. Once you've gone two or three deep on that, you're kind of on the edge of their nerves. So you can go two or three deep on the pivots then you stop it. If nothing else, say, hey, could I schedule a follow-up call with you? I'd love to pick your brain about something. Uh, Would you mind passing my information on? Um, Hey, are you participating in any events that are coming up? Maybe you're going to the conference. Are you going to the VETS conference? Are you going to the HUBZone conference? Are you going to the 8A conference? Oh, you are? Oh, I'm going to be there too. I'd, I'd love to just put a face to a name while you're there. So hopefully I'll get to see you. 
Those are little bitty touch points that you can have. But number one, go in with an objective. Hey, I'm trying to do one of those three things. Learn something specific, book a capability brief, build a relationship. If you start with those three and understand this is a long game, that alone will change how they respond to you. And then if you have a pivot plan, then you can pivot to a couple of other things and not walk away from a call with nothing. See, this is where a lot of clients go wrong. A lot of people will get told no and say, well, thank you, I appreciate your time, and then hang up. They don't pivot ever. So having that pivot plan will help you tremendously. Now, look, I've mainly talked about contracting officers in this podcast. This also works with teaming partners. You need to do the same research, be educated the same way, be ready to go through what your primary objective is and focus on that so that you know, I'm trying to learn something, I'm trying to book a capability brief, I'm trying to build a relationship. You know when you go in what you're focused on so that when you call that teaming partner, and yes, you can give capability briefs to teaming partners so they can know more about you. When you go in to book that call or when you go in to, to make that call, you know how you're going to pivot when you get told no. People are almost never, almost never told yes to the first thing they ask. It's extremely rare. That's why the pivot plan is so important. If you have questions about this podcast, please reach out to me. I would love to help talk with you, maybe coach you through what's going on. And we'd love to have you in our group coaching program if you are struggling with government sales. Reach out to me anytime for more questions. See you next episode.